Hello, this is Bill Worrell with Virginia Cooperative Extension. Today's episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest, I'm going to take you into the woods and look at some snakes. My name is Kevin Hammond. I'm a collegiate uh, assistant professor of wildlife conservation at Virginia Tech. And today we're in Craig County and you're at our pine snake study site. So part of the, the purpose of this project is we're trying to document the presence of pine snakes uh, in the state of Virginia. The last time one was documented was in 1989. And we're really just trying to get some good baseline information to find out if the snake still exists in the state of Virginia. That's gonna help our Department of Wildlife Resources determine the best course of action to, for future management for this species. So that's kind of the basis of our, of our program. But the other part of our project where we need your help is we're hoping that landowners just like yourself could kind of keep an eye open for us. But you might be out hunting, fishing, hiking, biking, or just doing work on your land. And if you encounter one of these snakes, we would really appreciate if you would take a photo, if you have your phone with you, or get some type of evidence for us just to let us know where it might be located. And one of the reasons we're here in Craig County at this particular location is these snakes are often very site specific as to the type of the habitat they prefer. We're in really kind of dry open area. Uh, you can tell by a lot of the vegetation that's growing here, a lot of the pines, a lot of the more scrubbier oak species, post oak, some other things, that this is a very dry area, sandy soils. And then you might be able to see in the ridges behind me too, there's a lot of rocky ridges behind us. All of those areas combine to make really perfect pine snake habitat. Other places you can find the snake, uh, the pine barrens of New Jersey. They can be found in Florida, they can be found in, in Georgia. So you could see that the shift is for these kind of sandier soils. So if you've got some habitat that maybe resembles this or that has some of those other characteristics, please keep an eye open for us. Now one of the neat things, if you explore our project website, we have all the information on that website that will tell you how to submit your observations to us. We also have some really good information on how to identify a pine snake. And there's a couple other species of snakes that sometimes folks might confuse for a pine snake. Our eastern hognose snake, which is still a really incredibly interesting animal. Um, some people in the Appalachians might call them a, a puff adder because they will flare out when they get scared and they go through this really cool behavior of faking their death. And and we also have our young, our juvenile rat snakes, which have a pattern to them that is a little similar to, to a pine snake. But feel free to review the, the website. Again, some great uh, information on there, pictures that will help you identify the snakes you might be encountering. Now, the pine snake, one of its behaviors that's, that will really help you know for sure that we might be dealing with a pine snake, they're typically kind of a light, uh, whitish, yellowish background with dark blotches on them. And you'll see they have a, a very kind of a, a, a truncated almost snout to them. The other thing that they'll do is when they are afraid, they will puff up and they make a very loud hissing noise. And we were just talking, that's one of the problems potentially. If someone's already a little uneasy about a snake and they find a really large snake that starts hissing at them, that maybe could potentially lead to the snake's uh, demise. You know, we don't necessarily want that to happen. But if you think you're seeing that, we've got some records too in other states where people are just able to take a video and you never really even see the snake, but you can hear it. And that sometimes can be uh, pretty diagnostic too that you run into a pine snake. So we need your help. We're hoping landowners just like yourselves and other folks that are outside and enjoying the, the great state that we live in might be able to run into one of these and give us an observation. So we really appreciate your help. Thank you. So one way we monitor the snake populations out here is with the use of drift fences. And what a drift fence is, is it's a regular old silt fence that we dig into the ground and run along a uh, tract of land. Uh, and what happens is, is a snake might come, slither along and hit this fence, and then it will run either side of it along the edge until it finds this hole here. And it'll go inside of that bucket, and inside of that bucket there's a camera that takes a picture and a video every time motion is triggered. And that way we can know anything that hits this fence and runs, runs through that bucket, we know what it is. So, you know, the next question you might have is, okay, 
why are we searching for snakes in general? A lot of folks, when I mention that I'm studying snakes, you, you always get that look. And uh, my daughter always wonders why I'm not studying things that are cute and fuzzy. But really, in our ecosystem, snakes serve a very vital, a vi valuable role to us, a very vital role. And they are consuming small mammals uh, in many cases. Other things will consume insects, some of our smaller species. But often, these are things that can cause problems for landowners, for homeowners. Some really interesting work we've seen, too, that's come out of uh, some of the other universities doing research. Lyme's disease, something that all of us that spend time in the outdoors, we worry about. In areas where you see the snake population decline, the rate of Lyme's disease increases. And the thought there is that that intermediate stage of that tick is, is living on a small mammal before it comes to you. And in the process is then going to transmit uh, the disease to you. So as those snakes are consuming those small mammals, they are also consuming the ticks that are on them. So they're definitely a great benefit to us. The other thing is a lot of things that people do get very excited about. Things like bobcats, maybe owls, uh, some of our hawks. All of these are also feeding on snakes. So snakes provide that vital link within our ecosystem. Now, one thing a lot of folks don't think about too is many of our pharmaceutical drugs have their origins within nature, whether it be from animals or plants. And there are some that come from snakes as well. The saliva of, of northern water snakes, for instance, has some potential as serving as an anticoagulant drug. So they are scary and they're often scary because you don't expect them to be where they are. Many of our snakes kind of lie in wait uh, and wait on food to come by them. So as you get close to them, they're not necessarily going to ra run away from you the way you might think a mammal would. But they're lying there waiting on food. You see them and it, and it gives you a, you know, a scare. And a lot of people tend to remember that. But uh, it's amazing how many folks spend so much time in our forested areas and do encounter things like copperheads and rattlesnakes and walk away from it without any harm. Now, you know, some people, their response to that is, I just want to kill every snake. I often hear the only good snake is a dead snake. We do need to give them some respect and they are filling a very viable role within our ecosystem. Now, on the other end of that, sometimes folks see a snake and they want to pick it up and they want to, you know, to observe it. And especially with young folks, um, as long as they're 100% sure what that snake is, that's the key. Just make sure your identification is really good. It's a great opportunity to introduce our young people to our, our ecosystems that we have in Virginia and how valuable forested land, just like I'm standing in right now, is. As this land is, you know, harvested for timber. Uh, or in this case where the Forest Service is doing control burns to keep it open, uh, which makes great pine snake habitat. As you're removing timber from your property that's opening up areas and making great areas for, for snakes to bask. So seeing those areas, learning to appreciate these animals for the job they do in the ecosystem is so important. And we definitely need to be passing that down to our next generation. But again, please check out our website on our pine snake project. Our contact information is there. If you ever run into an issue on your property with a snake, even if it's not a pine snake, please feel free to contact me. My phone number is there, my email address is there, and we'll be glad to help you any way we can with snakes on the areas you're trying to manage. And thank you for keeping an eye open for our pine snakes. All right, this here is an Eastern milk snake. Uh, they are found here in Craig County, along with corn snakes. They are called milk snakes because uh, they, people used to find them in barns with their cows and they used to think that they were eating milk or drinking, drinking the milk. Uh, but really what they were after were the rodents that you can also find in those barns. And that's their predominantly, predominant diet is rodents. And you can find them in sort of dry places like this in Craig County as well as fields like we're in now, under boards like this, and they're very docile. I don't, I don't think I've ever been bit by a milk snake before, maybe. All right, well this is a corn snake. They're named corn snake because you can see the pattern on their sides, they resemble corn. We're commonly found in corn cribs, and they're kind of the golden retriever of snakes. They're often found in Craig County because it's nice sandy soil. Very, very special to the area. See? Super sweet, super sweet snakes. Hi, my name is Sam Vanoy. I'm a research technician on Dr. Hamid's Pine Snake Project. Uh, I've been working on this project since uh, the spring. Uh, you know, I, I think this area is such a special, special area. The, the habitat is something that you don't really see a lot in Virginia. You see a lot of it 
or especially in the mountains. You see some of it on the coast and you see some of it in North Carolina and, and New Jersey, but this area is so special. We run into a lot of, uh, a lot of different species of uh, reptiles and amphibians. We've seen corn snakes, milk snakes, timber rattlesnakes, lots of different coal skinks, five line skinks, a lot of different species. Uh, it's, it's a really unique area. Uh, like I said, I've been doing it since the spring and uh, we've been not only monitoring uh, snake populations via cover boards, but as well as using uh, drift fence techniques uh, and taking pictures of them. Hi, my name is Caroline Bryant. I'm a senior at Virginia Tech. I'm pursuing a double degree in biology and wildlife conservation. Currently, I am working on Dr. Kevin Hammond's project, his pine snake project, as an undergraduate researcher. This project has been really fun. I'm out here maybe once a week, and when I started my undergrad, I wasn't really sure if I was too keen on snakes, but this has really been an eye-opening process for me. I've fallen in love with the area. I've fallen in love with the snakes. Super enjoy being out here. So as any undergrad or anybody pursuing research, I definitely say get your toes in the water and just see what's out there. So of course we've seen snakes out here. We've seen corn snakes, milk snakes, racers, black snakes, but some really interesting things that aren't snakes are wild turkeys. We've seen grouse. We've even seen red salamanders up on the ridge. Uh, probably the most interesting and scary-esque thing that we've seen is a rattlesnake in its rattlesnake den. So that was super cool. That was a first experience for me. All right, so I am planning on graduating this December, December 2021. So in terms of post-grad career, I definitely want to pursue wildlife more. I, I think immediately after post-grad, I'd love to do technician jobs, maybe even continue on with this project as we're expanding next year. But grad school is definitely in my future. So wildlife biologist for me. Thank you for joining me for my episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest, where we learned about snakes.